Sunday, September 25, 1988, Seoul Olympic Stadium, South Korea. This is the men's final of the 400-meter hurdles. Edwin Moses, the undisputed king of the event, will add another chapter to his gold medal lore. At least that's what the world expected. There he is. He's magnificent. He's so cool, calm and collected. He has it all together. Knows what he's got to do. He's thinking about the 13 strides between each hurdle, thinking about yet another Olympic gold medal. He's an amazing man. But three lanes down, a young man from East San Jose was determined to write a different ending. I was totally focused. So my goal was really to beat him. Knocked out of the two previous Olympiads, Andre Phillips had chased his idol since his days on the San Jose City College track team. I stood there when they said, on your marks, I turned around to look to make sure everyone was getting in the blocks because I wasn't going to move until he moved in the blocks. I mean, he's the greatest 400 meter hurdler ever. In the split second that Phillips turned back around to set himself in his blocks, he changed his strategy. So Moses in three has a better draw, I feel, than Phillips in six. Well, he started getting in the blocks, and when I turned around, immediately I changed my race strategy. And I, I said, you know what? I'm just going to go. If you want me, you won't have to come get me. Away, and the king got a clean start. I went for the first five or six hurdles. I was about a half a step in front of Edwin. Didn't know it at the time. Phillips just in front of Moses. The king has to respond. It's hard to believe, but I'm, I don't know, 6,000 miles away, sitting in my front room, yelling and screaming. <laughs> and, you know, yes, yes, yes. Moses coming at Phillips, I don't know. He's going to get beaten, I think. And Bart's flying. Bart comes at Phillips. Phillips beats Bart, and Moses has lost. And Phillips takes Moses' Olympic record with him. The unbelievables happen. Andre Phillips has won the gold medal. I think the, my first thought was, I beat him. It wasn't had nothing to do with the gold. It had nothing to do with this. It was, I beat him. I finally beat him. Bert Bonanno recruited Phillips out of high school and knows exactly how he pulled off the upset victory. It was a combination of many years of hard work, doing the best that you humanly can do at the right time at the right moment in the Olympic Games finals. Can't get any better than that. And coaches don't come any better than Bonanno. In the history of international track and field, he is a larger than life figure. He was the head track and field coach for the national teams of Mexico and Peru, and he coached Olympic athletes from many other countries. From 1969 until he retired in 2003, he was Dean of Athletics and head track and field coach at San Jose City College. Before SJCC, Bonanno studied under the legendary coach Bud Winter, the father of San Jose State's famed Speed City. He hired me to start a freshman program at San Jose State. He was an exceptional man. Bonanno infused the Speed City culture at SJCC, recruiting Robert Pointer to be his part-time assistant. Pointer was already a full-time coach and teacher at Silver Creek High School. The two men had been friends since their time at San Jose State. Bonanno had coached Pointer, a world-class sprinter. The two men had qualities in common. No swearing high goals, high enthusiasm. What he taught me was how to develop an outstanding program. And one of the main ingredients was to surround yourself with good people. Bonanno was passionate and persuasive, convincing high school coaches to send their athletes to SJCC. And he sold elite athletes on delaying full scholarships to schools like UCLA to compete at City College. We have great athletics teams here. Um, we've got great teachers here. Um, it'll be a great system for you. I will be there for you. You got Robert Pointer there, a coach Pointer. Um, and it was weird, because after about a day, it was an easy call. At City College, Bonanno and Pointer were a dynamic duo that created a program that made championship and Olympic dreams a reality. The team could compete against four-year schools. It was that good. We could go against UCLA and SC and all of them. Since the 1960s, 
SJCC's track and field program had produced Olympians like Phillips, Lee Evans, Otto Bolden, Diamara Planell Cruz, and Silver Creek High track star, Millard Hampton. He is so special, so soft-spoken, so bright. We were on the same track team. I was a freshman when he was a senior at Silver Creek. And to watch him run that 100 and 200, man, you know, he, he, you know, he, he was king of the city. But it wasn't just SJCC's track program that attracted Hampton. Then, one of the most elite sprinters in the nation. Why here? You know why? Because San Jose City College is diverse. It was an environment that I was comfortable with. I had friends, which I still do to this day, from all cultures, because I think that, that life is living with all cultures. In 1976, while still an SJCC student, Hampton prepared for the Montreal, Canada Summer Olympic Games. He just was amazing. No one knew who he was. He was adamant he would always wear the San Jose City College singlet. Hampton trained at the SJCC facilities with international athletes and U.S. Olympians of that era. They included Al Feuerbach, Mac Wilkins, John Powell, and future decathlon champion Bruce, now Caitlin, Jenner. Bonanno and Pointer coached Jenner and helped raise money from local Rotary clubs to cover living expenses. It was the Burt and Bruce show. I would explain who he was, I would say 95% sure that he would become the Olympic champion, but we need your help. And they'd write out checks for two, three hundred dollars. Hampton taught Jenner sprint techniques. Jenner coached him on the intangibles. I was able to get a lot of knowledge uh, in order to, uh, to be, one, an Olympic athlete, and two, how to handle just being nervous, the butterflies. Hampton competed in two events in Montreal he lost a 200 meter sprint by a fraction of a second. This is the medal, I call this one that medal, you know, but, uh, but and I only lost by about this, this much distance, but, but I lost against a great athlete, uh, Donald Quarry of Jamaica. But it was in the 400 relay where Hampton would strike gold. It was like uh, a hot knife through butter, everything just, the passes were smooth, we got along great, won that gold medal, so it was probably the most fun part of the Olympic experience. After the Olympics, Hampton transferred to UCLA, where he excelled as a student athlete. He and Bonanno remain close. There's all kinds of connection there. I like to use the word love. We normally finish a conversation where we love each other. A few years after graduating, he followed his aspiration to become a San Jose police officer. It was an ambition sparked after meeting Lee Brown. He was a family friend and San Jose police officer who went on to serve as police chief in New York, Atlanta, and Houston, and is considered the father of community policing. He would come with the police in his police car and visit for a time. I didn't talk to him that much things. I was just a kid, but, but just the impression of seeing an African-American police officer in the 60s. Then one day as a teenager, Hamden's aspirations collided with hard reality when a police officer pulled over his car. The San Jose cop sliced open his seats, searching for drugs that were never there. I had a fit and crying, upset. And I said, you know, these, these police officers, they're out of control, they're out of hand. And so my dad said something to me that I remember to this day. He said, well, you know, son, if you think, if you see something that's really bad out there, if you want to change it, you should be the change. As a police officer, Hampton bucked the norm, advocating for change at the San Jose PD from inside and out. The most difficult part when you join the police department is losing your identity. He advocated for community policing and the recruitment of more minority officers. Hampton says he and other like-minded officers helped to drastically reduce the number of police shootings. In fact, so much so that San Jose Police Department uh, became ranked as not, not only from the worst police department, it became one of the best police departments in the nation. Phillips' path led him to public education. After graduating from City College, he also transferred to UCLA on a full athletic scholarship. He credits his high school coach, Stan Dow, for preparing him for his Olympic victory. Phillips became the principal of a high school in Stockton and recently earned his doctorate degree. He says Coach Pointer inspired his love of education at Silver Creek High. The soft-spoken coach was the first black teacher that Phillips, Hampton, and fellow black students had ever encountered. 
he was a true mentor to, to all of us. He's actually teaching you, one, how to be a man, two, how to grow up in, in America being a black man. I wanted them to be good at everything they did, regardless of whether it was athletics or whether it was school. It's so important to have that inner pride. In fact, Phillips' doctoral thesis was on mentorship, which included interviews with Bonanno and Pointer. They are actually a chapter each in my dissertation. To this day, these Olympic champions and their coaches keep a tight bond. Camaraderie is just amazing, and it was lifelong, and still is to this day. The one decision that I made in my life that I have no regrets on was coming to City. When people ask me, why didn't you, why didn't you just go straight to UCLA? I said, if I didn't come here, I probably would have been unsuccessful there. So I needed to come here. And it is here where these athletes and their coaches forged their unbreakable bond and helped write San Jose City College's chapter in Olympic history.